So you've been brought onto a Salesforce project and it's a bit of a mess. The org is a tangle of undocumented automations, convoluted sharing rules, and custom objects that seem to duplicate standard objects for no apparent reason. Sound familiar? Well, my name's Dave Norris, and early in my Salesforce career on projects, that is how I felt on more than one occasion. It's also why in this video, I'll be covering a process to document key architectural design decisions to help. In order to bring this to life, let's take a look at a decision that many architects make on their projects. Should we use a single or multi-org strategy? A good key design decision has a summary, the options considered, the decision makers, and eventually an outcome. Now to make a decision, I recommend researching assessment criteria. And these are what we'll use in a side-to-side -side comparison of a single versus multi-org strategy. And I've shown a few examples here of how you might start to do this. Now, this is an iterative process that requires the input of the wider enterprise architects, developers, and administrators to create a comprehensive list. Giving stakeholders the ability to add and modify assessment criteria in this iterative process is key to making sure that the final decision you make is well balanced and widely accepted. Now, in order to complete a side-by-side -side comparison, we need a way to rate each option. I would have typically used a risk rating like this split across three areas, the technical risk, the operational risk, and the business risk. And this prevents the decision being solely a technical one with importance given to how we'll support the business after go live. And as you can see, the risks use a traffic light system to indicate low, sum, or high risk. So now we're ready to do a side-by-side -side comparison. The decision matrix simply takes each assessment criteria and rates each option based on the risk. Here we can see an example for environment management, where for this project, a multi-org approach had some elevated risk. What I like about this process is it takes emotion out of the decision-making process. You're really just debating over low, sum, or high risk with key stakeholders before using those ratings to drive a final decision. This approach does have two main drawbacks for me though. Firstly, the final output is of varying quality, sometimes a document, sometimes a presentation. And the time to go from blank page to final decision can take a long time. And this is where architectural decision records and AI can help us. An architectural decision record or ADR has a structured format and universal language across different enterprises and industries, because as nice as my presentations were, they lacked consistency. ADRs contain the context, that's really the narrative of the problem or the decision we're making. It has considered options, so what alternative solutions are being considered, and it has a decision, which is really the clear definitive statement of the chosen solution. And then it has some consequences, they're the effects and outcomes of the decision. In other words, what becomes easier and what becomes more difficult. By adopting this template, I now had that universal language to communicate with that I found was widely adopted in enterprises. But I still had to create the document and that took a long time. And that's where generative AI can help me. Now, adopting generative AI for architectural decisions shouldn't be considered a one prompt hack it should be a more disciplined approach with a foundation of principles. So when I talk about AI in architectural decisions, I like to talk about three things. Firstly, you need an ethical framework because using AI for decision-making can have negative consequences because we all know large language models can amplify societal biases and the probabilistic nature has a certain lack of explainability. Secondly, an AI augmented world needs human oversight. An architect should always be accountable for every decision and so should course correct AI generated content. And lastly, you need a governance framework. Using AI for decisions has the risk of exposing sensitive or proprietary information. So consideration about security is important. And the decision process isn't about documenting generic pros and cons, but about evaluating choices 
against a structured set of criteria. So I recommend using the Salesforce well-architected framework in this process. With these set of principles, we can now start looking at using generative AI to craft a specific output, namely for us creating that architectural decision record. And the advantage here is the grunt work of researching, summarizing and formatting that document is delegated. And it's also a process that we can repeat at speed. Now, because generative AI is unpredictable and can be inaccurate, I advocate for keeping an architect in the loop at all times. And we're gonna use a technique called prompt chaining to break our decision-making process into logical steps. To highlight how this works, let's go back to that tangible example of a single versus multi-org strategy and walk through five example prompts. The first prompt lets an architect set context and build assessment criteria. We're gonna ask the AI to think more broadly by generating a list of objective assessment criteria grounded in the Salesforce well-architected framework. An example context takes into account business goals, technical constraints, data governance policies, and any pain points or challenges. And the output is a list of key criteria to be used as a starting point. Prompt two is where we do refinement, and this is where we put the architect in the loop. At this stage, we're gonna inject our own experiences and knowledge, because after all, the AI has no concept of your specific project's nuances. And the prompt's going to ask to update the assessment criteria based on new information we give it. The output's gonna be a refined list of key criteria, one that's been reviewed by an architect for accuracy. The third prompt is where we do options analysis. So after iterating through the assessment criteria, we can now build a comprehensive side-by-side -side comparison of the two options, single versus multi-org. And we're gonna use a simple risk rating in this case, low to high, to quantify the trade-offs. The output of this prompt is a side-by-side -side tabulated list with an associated risk based on the context from the first prompt. The fourth prompt, again, keeps that architect in the loop. This is our chance to challenge the AI's assumptions and inject the subtleties that only we as humans can have. And the output is gonna be a more human nuanced view of the considerations and risks at play. The final prompt is really gonna draft the architectural decision record with a final decision. Now, given the ADR is a well-defined template, the AI really speeds up the formatting and summarization of all of the key talking points for us. The output is that draft architectural decision record document ready to share with the project team for feedback. So chaining together prompts like this with those checkpoints for review has created a reusable workflow for architectural decisions. One which means that architects don't have to start with a blank page. And I really like this because you can apply it to any key design decision you make on a project. Just change the context and assessment criteria based on the decision you want to make. Now, ultimately, generative AI can elevate an architect's role on a project, use it for the grunt work of research and summarizing and creating these architectural decision record documents, whilst you focus on building a well-architected solution. If you like this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and check out the companion blog that I've linked in the description below.